Namaste, and welcome to the Buddhism Guide podcast by Yeshi Rabge. If you'd like more of my podcasts, blogs, videos, or guided meditation practices, visit my website, yeshirabge.com. And if you'd like to support my work, go to patreon.com forward slash Buddhism Guide. I hope you enjoy this episode. This episode is called Life Advice for High School and College Students. And it's a four part special interview series. I was recently interviewed by Dash Pant for a special series in trying to help out college and high school students. Dash Pant is an incoming freshman at the University of Western Ontario's Ivy School of Business and a former student from Delhi Public School International, India. He is passionate about helping and learning from his community of high school and college students, and that is why he started this In Conversation series. So I'd like to thank him for giving me this opportunity to talk to high school and college students. But the information contained in here is not really just for them, it's advice for everybody. So I hope you enjoy this special four part series. You said that we should not really attach ourselves to the outcome. Um, sometimes that gets really hard, especially when we're told that, oh, if we don't get this grade, this, this is going to happen. Or, Sometimes even with people who can't sleep, it's because they're so worried about what's going to happen if they don't, you know, they'll put like, I mean, any, any minor thing that happens to us now, because we have the internet, we can just go and look up, right? Oh, I didn't do this. Oh, my muscle is twitching a little. And you'll find some study that says, yeah, this happened to somebody because they did that. Or you didn't sleep. If you don't sleep this much, you're, you're just going to just something terrible will happen. And guess what? Now yeah, you're yeah. just even in a worse place than when you started, because you're like, oh my God, I need to sleep. If I don't sleep, this is this, this terrible things are going to happen. And that's, and they will happen then. And they will actually happen. And then you start believing them because it's almost again a circle. Yeah, the way we talk to ourselves is important. The way we think is important because first we think and then we act. So if you're telling yourself you're stupid, that's exactly where the way your mind is going to go. You know, if you say that I cannot do this, then guess what? You won't do it because you've told yourself. The way we talk to ourselves is so important that, you know, particularly we need to support ourselves. And you were mentioning about self-compassion a, a while back. This is self-compassion, support yourself. Instead of going like, oh God, I'm so stupid. Say to yourself, it's okay. I'm only human, we all make mistakes, we'll get through this. And the same with what you're saying, if you don't get the results you want, then the world will carry on. You know, when you get your results and they're not exactly the same, look out the window, the world is carrying on. The world didn't stop because you didn't get your result. So look at it that way, that okay, I've got this. So really sick, now what do I need to do? So support yourself. So I'll wait and I'll see what result I get. And when I get that result, then I'll decide what is my path? Where shall I go? Instead of like planning your whole life and you still haven't got a result. I mean, you know, you're just setting yourself up for anxiety and you're setting yourself up for failure. And failure is something that we don't like in our head. If we fail, then that inner voice will be telling us you're rubbish you're no good you'll never do anything so we need to be careful about the way we talk to ourselves and it's true if you look on the internet and it says you know because this happened and you didn't do this your leg is going to fall off it doesn't mean your leg will fall off you know maybe one person's leg fell off it doesn't mean everybody's will so you know the internet can be a wonderful thing 
but it can also be quite a stupid thing. And we need to be able to filter that out. And if you're a person who gets anxious quickly about things, don't look. Don't look, yeah. You know, if you've got a pain here and you think, oh, I'll look, but you know that you're a person that gets anxious, then I'd say don't, don't do it. Because then you'll think, oh, the worst thing. <laughs> the internet will only tell you the worst thing. Yeah, and um, and so I think the thing about, let's say, you did bad in, let's say, a series of exams, right? Repeatedly 10 exams, or you, you failed. In your head, you did something that is a failure for 10 times. Of course, your brain's going to register that, and the 11th time you're going to do it, it'll be, remember those 10 times where you failed, or remember those 10 times where you did bad. And then at the moment you do that, you're just going to set yourself up to fail for the 11th time. That is simply no yeah. way around it. So do you think we but should you know it's, it's down to expectations there. So you expected to get five A's, but you got five B's. Five B's are great. But it was only that you expected to get five A's. If you had expected to get five C's and you got five B's, you'd be more than happy. So it's down to expectations. So you have to be careful about your expectations and keep them under control because if you're going to allow your expectations to go off into somewhere where it's unrealistic to somewhere where you know you'll never be able to get that i mean we should aim high and we should try our best no doubt but if you're setting yourself unrealistic goals what you're doing is you're setting yourself up to fail so watch your expectations there because it is that that is going to cause you problems. Right. And my next question is, at this point, because there are so many distractions in our life, um, anything, you feel bored for five minutes, you can just open up anything, anything, YouTube, news, anything, and just distract yourself and just get into that loop. And it's at a point where we don't even do it consciously. Most, if we, if we just look back, at our day and think, okay, what did I actually do with intention? It's going to be very few things because we live in a culture of distraction. And so yeah, how can we use awareness to just sort of do things we actually want to do rather than do it out of compulsion and like you said, patterns, because our brain's directing us. We're not directing yeah. the mind anymore. Well, not only your brains are doing it there, also the algorithms of Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and WhatsApp. They're all set there to keep us longer and longer and longer. They want us to stay there. So not only now are you fighting your own patterns, you're fighting these algorithms as well. So scientists say that 53% of your day, you're spent in awareness, which means 47% of our day, we are unaware. I'm not talking about sleep, I'm talking about waking hours. 47% of your waking hours, you are being led by your subconscious mind, which means you are reacting and not responding to a situation. Just think about that. Nearly 50% of your day, you are totally unaware of what you're doing. You're in no control of what you're doing. You're just on autopilot. You're sleepwalking through life. You're just reacting that is quite scary so when we do mindfulness practice when we learn mindfulness practices to keep bringing ourselves back we can stretch this 53 percent of course we can't make it a hundred percent because we have this wonderful ability of like planning for the future and memories of the past so you will never be 24 7 mindful but what you can be you can stretch that so you need to have ways of keep bringing yourself back into the present moment. And the way to do that is to mix mindfulness with your daily routine. So something you're doing all the time. So if somebody rings your phone, instead of answering it straight away, just watch your breath a moment. Because remember I told you, your breath is your anchor into the present moment. So before you answer the phone, breathe so now every time that phone rings it's a time for you to bring yourself into the present moment if you have a house a big house and there's lots of doors 
every time you open the door, take a breath. If you like to go to the fridge and eat food a lot, every time you open the fridge door, take a breath. The more that you marry your daily life and mindfulness practices together, the more time you'll spend in the present moment. If you find yourself getting anxious or your emotions getting too much or you're overwhelmed or overthinking, as soon as you catch yourself doing that, do mindfulness practice to bring yourself back to the present moment. The more you do this, the more it becomes your habit. Remember, a habit is just the easiest path for our neurons to fire in the brain. These neurons are lazy. They just want to go the easy route. So if this is what you always do, this is the way the neurons are going to fire. So to get a new habit, we have to keep doing it and make a new path. So it's like walking through a forest. This is the path. And so it's easy to walk down the path. But now we want to start a new path. So we have to cut down all the, the things that are in our way and make a new path. But once we've made that new path, then it is. this is the way the neurons will go. And your old path will become overgrown. You have that ability to rewire your brain, that neuroplasticity, to mold your brain. So the more that you marry mindfulness practices and your daily routines together, the more that you're going to set new pathways that are less distracting, you're going to be more focused. That 53% is going to be stretched to 65, 70%. When we're more in control, then we can make good choices when we're being driven by our subconscious, we have no chance of making a good choice. And you, you may have done this 10 times and 10 times it's not worked for you, but because you're not being mindful, you'll do it 11 times and 11 times it now won't work for you. So you need to marry mindfulness and daily routines together. You do that, then you'll start rewiring your brain, become more focused, more calm, more aware and more present in the moment. Right. And now I would also like to ask you that uh, you've been doing this practice for more than 40 years and you live in a monastery, you've adopted all the practices. Have you at this point, would you say you've reached a sort of um, bliss or, or just this amazing feeling of awareness that we all think most monks have that they're, you know, constantly calm, they're constantly at ease, they're, they're free-flowing. Would you say you've achieved that? I don't think that uh, that's totally achievable. I mean, that's another perception people have. You know, we're human beings the same. Okay, we will be more calm, we'll be more peaceful, we'll be happier because it's inner happiness, but we still have emotions. You know, you can't, and you wouldn't want to stop your emotions but you learn how to catch them. And that's what you need to be doing, is catching those emotions and dealing with them, facing them, letting them go. So yeah, the more that you do these practices, the more calm, the more peaceful you're going to be, the, the happier you feel inside, the more contented you are. And the more contented with less things. You know, when your mind is not like that, you need lots of things around you so you can start to feel happy. But when you go inward and you calm yourself and you do years of meditation and practice, you find that inner calmness. So yeah, you will get that if you keep doing the practices, you keep looking, not even not sitting for hours in meditation, not even that, but like doing the reflection practice, learning and growing, learn and grow, learn and grow. The more you do that, the more you know yourself, the calmer you're going to be. And so, you know, all that energy that we waste on getting stressed and anxious and fearful about things that we have no control over, just imagine you take all of that energy and what good you can, what use you can put that good energy to. Yeah? So that's how it works, that you calm yourself down, you become more focused, more relaxed, more peaceful, but emotions will come but you'll catch them and deal with them. So most of the 
the monks that have been doing practices for years, they will be in that, that state. But, you know, if they're not being aware, that emotion could sneak through at any time and you could become angry. So you still have to focus. I mean, there's never a time when you sit back and say, job done. The job will be done when I take my last breath. That's when I can sit back and say, okay, no, no more can be done in this body. So, but yeah, you will get that peacefulness, that calmness. Anybody can, though. You don't have to be a monk. It doesn't mean that you have to, you know, leave the daily world and go and sit in a monastery. You know, the best way is to be a spiritual person in the daily life and put your spirituality and your daily life together and be the best possible person you can be. You don't need to join us. It's okay. We need people doing the work. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I think that wraps up pretty much all the questions I had. I mean, this has been such an amazing experience learning from somebody who's so experienced with all these things. It's been wonderful for me. I'm hoping that, you know, people our age have sort of picked up some words of advice that you've given them. But thank you so much for being here once again. Um, for everybody that's there, you can always ask Lamaji any questions on his YouTube channel. It's called Buddhism Guide. He's got the podcast running on Spotify. And once again, it's been truly amazing. I have learned so much. So thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you for inviting me. It's been good fun. Thank you. This is the end of this episode. But if you'd like to listen to more of my podcasts, go to my website, yeshirabge.com. So thank you so much for listening. And remember, the only person we can ever really know is ourselves. Bye for now. <laughs>